Juliana Rancic of E! Entertainment recently announced on the Today Show that she is battling breast cancer, proving that it is an indiscriminate disease. It doesn't matter if you're a celebrity like she is or the girl next door, old, young, rich, white, black, otherwise, it doesn't matter. If you're a woman, it could strike you and it could strike you next. In fact, one in eight women will hear the doctor say you have breast cancer this year. So on this edition of It's Your Call, we're providing you with a tutorial of sorts, giving you what we hope is basic understanding of breast cancer. We have two of the region's leading breast surgeons with us to um, explain it all to us and kind of break it down in the most simplest of terms, and I certainly appreciate you doing that. We talked about the common forms and the various stages of breast cancer. What are the common treatments? Does it correlate with whether you're in stage one versus stage four and whether it's invasive you know, ducts or whether it's lobular? I mean, is it all just depending on what your diagnosis is? Well, uh, some of it does have to do with what your diagnosis is, what stage your tumor is, but some of it has to do with personal preferences as well. So when we diagnose a woman, particularly with early stage breast cancer, we give them the basic options of lumpectomy, which involves removing the tumor, removing normal tissue around the tumor, but conserving the rest of the breast, or mastectomy, which is removal of the entire breast. Now some women say to me, well isn't that a little aggressive to remove the whole breast in a early form of breast cancer, but for some women for peace of mind or if they have a genetic link to their breast cancer, removing the breast is really a good option. We can follow it with immediate reconstruction, so a woman wakes up and she already has at least part of her reconstruction done. I think that's probably the biggest fear that when women hear breast cancer, they automatically assume that they will have to have a mastectomy or that they will lose their breast. So you're saying that there is an option for the, the patient to actually consult with their breast surgeon and make that decision. Yes, especially with early stage breast tissue, uh, or I'm sorry, breast cancer or uh, smaller tumors. Um, so when we look at it, we do it in, in that, the staging, the preoperative staging really helps us make that decision process or help the the patient go through that decision process. Sometimes the tumor is too big or there's multiple spots of the tumor and we don't have a choice, but most women have a choice. Even women with larger tumors, sometimes we can actually shrink the tumor down and give them the option of breast conservation. I'm glad that you mentioned shrinking the tumor because the other thing that comes to mind after you hear breast cancer and you think mastectomy is chemo or radiation. Are, are those two still as predominant in treating breast cancer as, as they used to be? They really well, are. I think yeah. Chemotherapy, in some ways, we may be using chemotherapy more than what we once did, which is surprising, but... But we're more selective But we also. are more selective. Uh, right. We're able to select, especially a certain subgroup of people with early stage breast cancer, we can sub-select who may benefit from chemotherapy and who may not benefit from chemotherapy stage per stage. So, you know, you may have the same tumor size and the same lymph node status as, as, as another person, but you may not gain any benefit from doing chemotherapy, which means you have a very, a lo, uh, not a very aggressive tumor, whereas somebody with the same size tumor may need chemotherapy. Okay, so what's the difference then between choosing the route of chemo and radiation? Do they both do the same thing? No, radiation's a local therapy, just like surgery. So surgery and radiation therapy really treat the tumor locally in the breast. It's to remove the primary tumor and to treat the lymph nodes. If we're concerned about the potential of the tumor coming back somewhere else in the body, like in the liver or the lungs or in the bone, that's where we, really where chemotherapy plays a role, unless we give it first to shrink a tumor. Is chemo as, as awful as it was 10, 20 years ago? It really uh, is not in general. We have so many new medications that we can use to, to help prevent a lot of the side effects from chemotherapy. So we, uh, people hear about nausea, they hear about vomiting, they hear about being tired. Those things we can help with. Unfortunately, for most women who get chemotherapy, they do lose their hair, and that is a big deal for mm -hmm. women. Most, a lot of patients who come to my office and ask about chemotherapy, they're not worried about being nauseated or tired. They're worried about losing their hair because that is the sign that everyone can see. Everyone, mm -hmm. your friends, the people at church, the people in your work, all of a sudden they know that you're sick, that right. you're having chemotherapy, and it makes it really hit home for women, and that's tough. Yeah, and, really and it's it's kind of a 
part of who you are mm -hmm. and part of your identity. And As so women, when it's, it's so I, important. Right, when it's then identified with cancer and say, we've done shows on that and people right. are just very, very moved by it. In fact, I'm going to invite our viewers to uh, share some of your stories with us. If you have questions or comments or perhaps you've had an experience like the doctors are referring to about hair loss, please uh, feel free to go ahead and email me and I am going to share them with the doctors. We do have a couple of um, comments from our viewers that I do want to share with you. Here's Tammy's story. She wrote and said, my mom's battle started 19 years ago. She has stage four incurable cancer, but she's one of the strongest women I've ever met. Her life is so diff different than it was a few years ago, yet as hard as it's all been, she remains strong in her faith. She often says to us three daughters, I'm sorry you have to go through this with me. I tell her, this is our lot in life, and no matter what, we're all in it together. With God, we can get through anything. I have to tell you, I was moved by that that comment that for 19 years she's been fighting it. So, I mean, it is possible to actually not just battle breast cancer, but live with it. Mm -hmm. Right. And it never goes away. It's just right. always there. And the one thing you never know about a story like that is, uh, was there a cancer? Was her cancer metastatic at the beginning? Or did she have, was she first diagnosed with cancer 19 years ago and then recently became metastatic? But there are absolutely women that we see that have been living with disease for years and are still doing well. So just because you have a diagnosis of breast cancer, just because you hear those words, does not mean that you have to write your will. It doesn't mean that you have to put all your affairs in order. You can still plan on going to your kids' soccer games and seeing your child walk down the aisle and all those things that are so important to us. So when he, we hear it's incurable, it, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a death sentence. It's, it's no. just something it she lives with. Right. right. It can be treatable. treatable. It's treatable. So it's treatable. It's just it may never not be going to go away. Curable. It's more like a chronic disease like high blood pressure or diabetes. Obviously a little bit more See, serious. See, I learned something but, just in this show yeah. right here. The other thing is we, we mentioned this word at the beginning of the program. It came up again, metastatic. Now when I hear that, I think this is bad. It just sounds bad. So can you kind of clarify for us what it means if it's metastatic breast cancer? Well, metastatic breast cancer means that it has moved out of the region of the breast and the lymph nodes and elsewhere in the body. The most common places that we see breast cancer spread are to the lungs and the liver and into the bone. Um, so depending on the initial presenting stage that somebody, when we make a diagnosis, uh, or if somebody's having symptoms, we may do some additional testing to look for those lesions. When we approach the treatment of metastatic breast cancer, it's a little bit different than how we approach a localized breast tissue, uh, breast so? cancer. Uh, we, because we do treat it more like a chronic disease. Okay. So we may opt for a medication that has lower side effects to control the disease rather than hitting it up front with a really aggressive chemotherapy regimen. Well, it's interesting because our next viewer has a question, I think that's along those same lines. David writes, my sister-in-law was diagnosed with stage four breast cancer that went into the bone. Unfortunately, she does not have health care insurance, so she is now what we call a charity case. If you know any alternatives, please let me know. She's been told she has at most a year, but I'd like her to be as comfortable as possible. So that story is is tragic right. on two fronts, one that she doesn't have health insurance and one that she's going to be in pain. Any suggestions? I mean, what do you do when someone doesn't have insurance and yet they have this horrible disease? Right. Well, in Pennsylvania, at least, and I don't know if this is true for other states, but I know in Pennsylvania, if you have no health care insurance and you're diagnosed with breast cancer, you can get Medicaid coverage. So, for example, for if you're diagnosed with DCIS and you have no health insurance, you can be you can qualify for Medicaid if you have. I mean, obviously, you have to have certain characteristics, financial everything. And I don't know what the details of that are. But if you have a diagnosis of a non-invasive cancer, then you can have Medicaid coverage for six months. If you have invasive, you have Medicaid coverage for a longer period of time. And very quickly, because we have to take a break. But if um if she has less than a year to live, will the pain management be at the, at the top priority for whatever doctor treats her? Yeah, I would think that would be high with um, metastases to the bone. And that can be controlled in multiple different ways. It can be controlled with medication, obviously narcotics for the pain medication, but also potentially radiation to areas that are very symptomatic. Okay, David, thank you very much for that uh, question. We'll take a quick break. We have a few more stories and a few more questions for our breast surgeons when we return. If you have a question, please email me at Lynn at Lindor. Well done yet.